All right, so at this point, what I want to do is, um, with this project, uh, we've been developing this, this web app. Uh, it's meant to live on a web server, and then it fully works. But eventually, it's going to be an, an Android app. And now I'm going to address this issue that uh, came up a bit previously, and now we'll actually deal with it, where if we go back to our uh, index file for our web app, our mobile site, and we look at the, the three lines that are referencing external content, lines 13, 19, and 20, the project's been working so far, but what would happen if jQuery crashed, jQuery.com crashed, then our project would be affected, because our project needs to work based on this external content, jQuery.com content. And if their server goes down, it takes us down in a way too, because then our styling will be gone, our CSS transitions will be gone, etc. So we want to set ourselves up for local development. We want to set, our, set ourselves up so that these external files are in our project folder. That way we're not reliant on an internet connection except for the Google Maps GPS stuff, because that has to be from a, from a server. So uh, that's how we're going to set ourselves up now. We want to get these external files and put them internally into our project. So it'll be a matter of downloading some of this, some of this stuff. So let's do that right now. Uh, go ahead and open your web browser, and let's go to jQueryMobile.com. We'll start with jQueryMobile.com, because that's the slightly harder one. jQueryMobile.com. So let's go to jQueryMobile.com. On the right side, we've got a download area. Download jQuery Mobile, and we've got custom download or latest stable. And I see now they're on version 1.4.4. And we're outdated. 1.4.3. We're ancient. So we're going to fix that in a moment. I guess we should read what's different and then fix it. But uh, let's select then on the right side, click latest stable. And what should happen is it, uh, I'm in Chrome, so it went to download right away. If you're in Firefox, it may pop up to say, would you like to save the file or open the file? Select save. So let that download. It's about seven and a half megabytes. We're going to let that download. It'll probably go to your desktop. And what it gives us is a zip file, a compressed file, an archive file that has a bunch of files zipped into one file for easy internet transfer. And all of the files in, in that archive we do not need. We only need two files and one folder. I'll show you which ones in a moment, as soon as you're finished downloading. Raise your hand if yours finished downloading. Okay, good. Raise your hand if it needs a little more time. Okay. So, as I said, what we're downloading is the whole code of jQuery mobile, and we need the jQuery CSS file, the jQuery JavaScript file, and a folder of images. That's how those icons work. All of those data icon equals bullets, data icon equal home, they're in a folder that is in this archive that we need to extract. So if you downloaded your project or your zip file, go ahead and open the zip file so we can see its contents. So mine's on the desktop, double click it on the desktop. And here's what it's full of. A lot of extra files that we don't need, a lot of them that look named exactly the same, but we have to be careful here. Um, so we've got jQuery mobile dot external ping 144, we've got jQuery mobile inline ping 144, we've got jQuery mobile theme 144, etc. The two files that we need are at the bottom. jQuery mobile 144 min js and jQuery mobile 144 min dot css. Be careful, not the last two files, but two of the last files. Not this dot map file. We don't need that. 
You need these two files, and all you need to do is select them both and just drag them into your folder of your mobile website. Not in the root. They're not going to be necessary in the root. They, they should be in the project folder. So inside the mobile website project folder. So from my, my left window here, this is my zip file. I'm looking at the stuff inside the zip file. I'm just going to click and drag, click hold and drag, and drag into my folder of my project. So both those files, the, the, the two ones at the bottom, jQuery mobile 144.min.css and the same .min.js. Drag them into the mobile website folder. So right there, double check your file names. And then also drag your images folder from that zip file. Now uh, we get a little conflict here because we've got images folder here and images folder here. Um, if I drag this, what happens? It says it already contains any files you have, same names. You will be asked if you want to replace. Do you still want to merge? Okay, I think we'll be safe. But just in case, I'll put it over here first. So I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to drag the image folder from the zip file into my mobile website files. It says, would you like to merge the contents? I'll say yes. So these are the images that make jQuery Mobile work because remember we're not we don't just have those icons that we can access. We have some of the built-in graphic elements that sort of happen on their own. Okay, so the result is that I've dragged over these J2, jQuery mobile files and the images folder. And in the images folder, if you want to take a look, these are the ones we've looked at, we've used previously, graduate student training, etc. And now we've got Ajax Loader GIF. This is the animated graphic that appears when you go from screen to screen and, and, and things might be loading slowly. So you can edit that if you want. And then uh, SVG and ping versions of the icons. SVGs for more modern, uh, most modern versions of the web browsers. And then ping versions for slightly less modern. So you could go in and, and if you know some Photoshop, or you can use Pixlr, you can go in and edit these icons yourself. Maybe you change the calendar icon, put a red dot on one of those days, or change the camera icon here, but you've got a very small size to work with. What are these? 14 by 14, even smaller than a fave icon. And their ping files. The SVG format, um, those can be resized to large devices, small devices, but to edit SVG files, that's out of our scope because I don't quite know myself. But uh, SVG files are a new type of file format, relatively new, that is mathematically based. Apparently this was made in Illustrator. Anyway, did everyone copy their images and uh, two supporting files? All right, so now we need to copy or download the jQuery file, because jQuery Mobile works on top of and in conjunction with jQuery. So now we need the jQuery code. Let's go back to the web browser, and at the top left, the whole family of um, jQuery sites is here. We're currently on jQuery mobile. Here we have jQuery, the first icon. 
So we're going to go find the jQuery file. This one's just going to be one file, the jQuery file. Let's go to jQuery. There's another ugly download button there. So let's click on download. And then we have a decision to make. We've got here the 1.x branch or family and the one and the 2.x family. Well, what's the difference? jQuery 1 has major changes. We strongly recommend that you use, that you also use the jQuery Migrate plugin if you are upgrading from a pre-1.9 version. And I believe we're using 1.9 something. .10. Okay, so we're not using an older version. This is saying if you're using version 1.7 or 1.8, you might need to migrate some of your plugins. But here it's saying um, this is 1. Point, they're actually on 1.11. Okay, so the 1.0 branch, the, the one branch. And then there's a the two branch. What's the difference? jQuery 2 has the same API as 1.x, but does not support Internet Explorer 6, 7, or 8. So if we are creating this web app that we want it to be accessible by the most platforms, we might want the 1.x branch. But remember, ultimately, we're going to be creating a mobile app. There's no such thing as Internet Explorer 6 or 7 or 8 on a mobile device. If you're on Android, there's no such thing as Internet Explorer. If you're on iPhone, there's no such thing as Internet Explorer. Even if you're on a Windows phone, this has Windows Internet Explorer 11, and the older version had 10. So we're going to upgrade to the most modern and cutting edge one, the 2x branch. We don't need to be backwards compatible. Yes, the end result of this class is a web app, but again, if we're, if we're using jQuery Mobile, that's still going to look pretty bad on Internet Explorer 6 anyway. So it's sort of like, how backwards compatible do you want to be? How far back do you want to be held back? Ultimately, we're looking to the future that our app is going to, our project is going to be an app, and we want to use the latest. Question? Is the advantage to the two version? Does that probably take less data? I'm not sure. I haven't compared file sizes yet, but I would assume so because it removes code that does not is not is no longer necessary for the newer versions. So notice it does say since Internet Explorer 8 is still relatively common because there's still um, you know older versions of Windows, we recommend using 1.x unless you are certain no IE 6, 7, or 8 users are visiting the site. We should be pretty certain because ultimately our app will not be visited by those web browsers. Okay, so we're going to go with the 2x branch. And we've got a couple of downloads here. The compressed production jQuery 2.1.1 or the uncompressed development 2.1. We want the compressed production version. This is the one that's that's got all of the extra spaces removed because even an empty space takes up space in a file. So to save even more, um, to be even more efficient, we want the compressed version. Uh, if I click here, it'll in Chrome it wants to ask me to download it or not. In Firefox, it might just show you the code. Can anyone get that? A big wall of code? Okay, if you see that, try to right-click instead. Right-click, save link as, or save file as. Let me do that. Let me go over to Firefox just to see what you're seeing. So if you simply click the download compress, you can get a wall of code. That's the that's the whole jQuery mobile code. Okay, we don't want that. We want to right click, save link as. 
There we go. It wants to download jQuery 2.1.1.min.js. Save that into your project folder. The same um, mobile website project folder. So make sure you're saving this to your mobile website folder, the same as the jQuery mobile files. Confirm the name, jQuery-1.2, uh, I mean 2.1.1.min.js, save. So this is what you should see then in your folder, the jQuery files and the jQuery mobile files and the images folder. We're done, right? What are we missing? We need to change our code. Our code is still pointing to the web versions and not the versions that are local. So we'll go back to our index file of our mobile project. We'll just go from top to bottom, line 13. This is pointing to the web version. We're going to change that file, that path. You're going to remove the HTTP part, cut that out until it only shows the jQuery file, the CSS file. And then the, f and then the version number, too. We just downloaded 144. See that? So change line 13 so that it only says the file name and 1.4.4. We're going to do basically the same thing for line 19. That will, we'll do 19 in a moment. Uh, line 20. Line 20 is a jQuery mobile file. Same thing there. And then we'll do line 19 in a moment, which is the the 2.x branch. So line 20. Same thing here. And then line 19, that one's going to be jQuery 2.1.1. So the whole point of this, if you save it and run it, it should basically look the same. It should behave the same. But the point of this now is that it's not dependent on an internet connection. If we didn't have an internet connection, the whole site would just be black and white because it has no connection to this to these CSS and JavaScript files. And now we've got copies locally. So I'm going to save and test this in Firefox. Looks the same as before. behaves the same as before. Question? Yeah. Looking at your, at your Firefox, so yes. in, the, in the tab where, where it says the My SDCE has your, your, your thing icon, mm -hmm. But in the in the address bar, it's got something funny looking. Just a little a little globe. <laughs> yeah, that. Well, well, well Firefox. Um, that's if your site had identity information, or if it had uh, 
security. Like when you go to the bank, that's where the lock should appear. Oh. So this so is that's just... Not, that's not an icon. That's that's no, that's Firefox's internal icon to show you about security and such. Oh. Question. Let me check mine as well. Uh, so as you guys save it and run this, is it uh, working? Yeah, same here. My about button doesn't work anymore. Well, it worked the first time that I loaded it. Yeah. So we should read the documentation. Something changed. Read? Yep. Have you heard of that term, RTFM? Read the funky manual? Something probably changed that we should have looked at before diving into the newest version. There's probably something new in 1.4.4 that makes your your pop-up, your dialog box happened slightly different. Okay, so well, two things we can do here. We can either download the 1.4.3 version and move on, or we can go see what's changed and then change our code as appropriate. Um, what uh, browser are you using? Ah, so, so you two are the... You two are the lucky ones. There it is loading in Internet Explorer. So I'm testing in Chrome here, and the About button doesn't work. It looks like it's about to work, but then it doesn't. What's that? So there's a few things that could be happening here. It's that uh, either the jQuery mobile or the jQuery uh, files, we've upgraded them, uh, and maybe our, our code for opening the dialog box might have changed, or it might be that we've flown too close to the sun, and uh, maybe we shouldn't have gone to the 2.x to the two point X version. I'm just going to try something here. I'm going to download the 1.x version, and I'm going to leave my jQuery mobile stuff, but download the jQuery 1x branch and see what happens. Because some of this stuff has just been updated, and I'm going to see what happens with 1.11. Better than before? Yeah, 
that's expanding the add to location. Data. Well, I uh, I downgraded or I changed over to one to the one X branch, and I'm still having the exact same issues. And then some of you, it's working. So um, remember that ultimately, this uh, project is going to be an Android app. So we'll <coughs> see what happens when we get to that point. So one way that we could deal with this at the moment is leave the references to the external content. Right, leave the code that points over to the to the uh, online versions of the code that's always been working, uh, and then uh, we'll see what happens when we get to the to working with Android. So not quite satisfactory, and in previous classes this has worked just fine, but I think it's because maybe newer versions of the code something's going on. So I'm not going to quite stress it just yet. So if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, uh, like I said, worst case scenario is you can just um, Put your code back to show your your uh, your CDN your your link to your external content. Question. If if, if we um, if we put the link back that showed the website mm -hmm. reference, if we pasted that into our browser, would we be able to download that exact version to our? We, we would, but I assume that what we've downloaded is the exact version of the code. I don't see why there would be different versions from what we're getting. Okay, I see, I see. You're saying from the 1.4 or 3. 1 .10 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That, that, uh, we could try that too. Uh, that needs a little bit more setup, but sure. Um, hmm? Well, you can uh, you can usually see the file in the web browser if you type its full path, view source maybe, and then get the code that way. I think use the jQuery mobile reference to get it to work. jQuery can do it. In other words, I had to put both of them as HTTP as links. You mean lines nineteen and twenty, or right. so I, you you said? I, I changed nineteen and that didn't work. Now I changed twenty and that worked. So only line 20 you needed to change to the HTTP reference, and then it worked? I have them both, so I don't know if just 20 will do it. But you didn't change your CSS file on line 13? No. Hmm. Yeah, it's odd that it doesn't uh, work as advertised. But like I said, I'm not going to quite worry about it at this point. I'm sure it's uh, working pretty well. Oh, four three with the old one. It's a link, yeah. So he went back to one three, one four Well, in a little bit of testing, I I left um, as soon as I added the local version of jQuery Mobile one four four that is no longer working. 
So I'm just kind of troubleshooting this a little bit. Yeah, because the new version of jQuery 2.1.1 min mm -hmm. local, and that worked as long as the um, link was to the jQuery mobile. Hmm. Maybe something's going on with the jQuery mobile 1.4.4 that is going to be addressed and we'll see 1.4.5 soon. <laughs> so what, this is what we'll do, just so that it's all still kind of working as we wrap things up. I'm just going to undo this back to, back to the online references, and I'll save it at this point, and then we'll deal with it on Thursday. I'll leave my files in the folder my local files and then we'll, we'll deal with it but I'm gonna put my code in the network folder in just a moment we're gonna wrap it up now um, but um, this is one of the last things we're, we're going to do that is eventually we're gonna have these uh, the local versions and we might have to downgrade we might have to find the 1.4.3 versions of the code which should be available on the website and keep these versions as is and then we'll go forward but uh, I'm gonna wrap this up at this point but any general questions yes is the in addition to not having to rely on the uh, web, which I think on those are pretty reliable, uh, is it to facilitate the packaging as a as a mobile, mobile app? Exactly. Once we get to the point that this becomes a mobile app, all of this, all of these files, JPEG files and ping files, everything, CSS files are going to be packaged into one file, an APK file, and this is not going to work if our files are still on a server. So we do want local versions of all of this stuff once we deal with Android, even if we were dealing with iOS, because we want those files to be compressed into the one app file. For Android, it's .apk. For iPhone, it's .ipa, I think. So we want it compressed. We want local versions. So that's why we do want to address this. And most likely, we'll just have to use the 1.43 versions. Yes? Um, here's a question. On the when you look at the, the jQuery mobile, it says the 1.4.4 works with 1.11. That doesn't have any points after that. Does that die? What are you looking at specifically? On the jQuery mobile site, where we downloaded it. Or is that just making reference to anything, but any of the stuff things after it? See, that says 1.82. 1.11-2.1. Yeah. So the one we downloaded was 1.11.1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1. Yeah. 2.1.1. 2.1.1, rather. But does that make a difference? Because it has that extra point, whatever? It could, uh, or sometimes it's it's not mentioned, the that final point, but I know that they did mention it here, so I, I don't know. It could be that, that... Um, we are the version that we're trying to use is a little too new. I, I don't know exactly. We'll have to research that. For the moment, we'll just take it back, undo that, and keep it as is, and then continue next time.